I'm back. I love summer. The heat, the sun, I just feel I can get more stuff done. And speaking of clearing my personal to-do list, I'm finally getting down to finishing that Twitter poll I put up a while ago. If you want to participate in future polls, follow us at twitter.com slash otakutariot. But base, base, Tropical's already been doing a Legend of the Galactic Hero series, and he's going episode by episode. Oh, is that so? I mean, that's cool. It's fine. It's not like I was here first. It's not like I finished the first season first. What do you mean you finished all 110 episodes? That's not the point. Man, I want you to say it, bro. I put you on everybody's head. Like, you I put you on every rapper you all know. Right, we understand. You, we get it, okay? You put me on it, okay? Yeah, yeah, you got it. You won, nigga. All right, bro. I'm just saying. Anyway, anyway, there's more than enough room for discussion on this very long series, so I don't think we'll be stepping on each other's toes anytime soon. Consider yourself warned. Okay, okay, enough sniping. It's time for another round of basic impressions. Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. As mentioned before, I watched season one, aka the first 26 episodes of Legend of Galactic Heroes. If you want my review opinion, yes, you should go watch this. It's very good. I think one of the biggest things that stuck out was how easy it is to get through. Each episode is paced so well and controlled that a single event is built up to and then finishes before the episode is over. So even though it might feel episodic at times, you're consistently moving forward in the overarching plot. And because I want you to watch it so much, this video actually won't contain any real major spoilers, except for maybe some visual ones if you care about some stuff like that, but nothing too egregious. In fact, the rest of this video is gonna be more me talking about my individual experience with watching the show. All right, so let's get into it. My experience watching this show could be summed up like this. Legend of Galactic Heroes is the anti-Evangelion. Wait, wait, I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. You ever watch a show and at some point go, oh, this show is about something. The in-universe plot and actions on screen are secondary to what the actual work is trying to communicate to you, the viewer, the audience. This doesn't mean the plot isn't important or that you can't enjoy it, but that the artists behind the work are trying to get you to think about something, hence Evangelion. I'm sure most people watching Ava early on figured out, oh, this show is about something else than just stopping aliens. The merits of how well they communicated that or even what it was they were trying to communicate is a topic for another video, but you see what I'm saying here, right? There is some idea deeper in Ava, and you don't need to go scour the artist's notes in order to try to find evidence of that. I don't really have a favorite character from Ava, at least in the traditional sense, because they are more representations of a variety of ideas. On the other hand, in Legend of Galactic Heroes, I absolutely have favorite characters. The literal plot struggles are the biggest drivers of the story. This doesn't mean there aren't themes or representation of ideas in Legend of Galactic Heroes. War is bad, be skeptical of power, change is inevitable, etc, etc. But those weren't thrusted to the forefront of my mind while watching. I primarily wanted to see how the plot conflicts developed and how the characters reacted in story as people more than, say, viewpoints. People. Real people. I think this is the key. I'm not naive. I know these characters were written and carefully constructed to elicit some of these feelings in me, but I never felt the story had to twist and contort itself into pretzels or reach into the abstract to communicate with me. Storytelling is hard. Great storytelling is even harder. So when it goes bad, well, just look at the almost endless deluge of just mediocre works we often sift through. Unlike those pieces, the situations in Legend of Galactic Heroes didn't feel manipulated. I didn't feel the creators were pre-screening me for ideas or wants I would be bringing into the work and then trying to answer or respond to them off a checklist at the sacrifice of just telling a good story. Think of the Disney live action remakes or The Rise of Skywalker. What is it, Peterson? I'm not sure. I feel a disturbance. There are so many points in those movies where you feel the people behind it have been scouring Reddit and trying to respond to every single criticism laid at previous works. It feels so jarring. You have a plot point developing, but then the hand that the creator reaches out and shakes me saying, do you see it? Did you get it? This is what you want, right? 
and it makes the work feel disingenuous. I don't feel you tried to craft a story and let the themes appear naturally. You slapped together a commercial product for consumption. This isn't only in sequels or remakes either. We use the word contrived to talk about situations that unnaturally arrive. Think about the last bad insert power fantasy you skimmed across. Notice too how the entire world has to bend over backwards in order to maintain our status quo and keep regular MC guy on a pedestal. You feel that hand of the creator again moving and placing pieces and you're taken out of the work. The people in those worlds are no longer characters, they're placeholders for tropes in the worst way. Okay, it's easy to pick on bad shows, but how does Legend of Galactic Heroes separate itself from other good shows? I still think this emphasis on people while staying well within the realm of fiction is uniquely handled. It was nice to not have to work so hard to understand the story from a fantastical or hyper-stylized frame point. Like, look, I love Kill the Kill. The story is amazing, the themes are ever-present, it's a beautiful art piece, and the characters are fully fleshed out, but they're fleshed out for that world. They could be representations of things from the real world, but my world is not presented like Kill a Kill, no matter how I wish it was sometimes. I don't live in a world where internal ideas are blatantly externalized and are tackled with extreme gravitas. I'm not constantly being told during my life that this is important or this right now means something larger or you should feel this right now. The real world is much closer to Legend of Galactic Heroes. Yes, it's in space. Yes, it's very dramatic at points, but it is still human, still grounded. It's like reading a good history book. The situations can be extreme and sound completely unrealistic, but there's an innate humanity in these stories. To translate that realism to a highly fictionalized setting is commendable. The setting allows for creative world building and setting up situations naturally without sacrificing familiarity of the characters as people. The creators put the people in place and let me engage with the narrative on my own. I didn't feel manipulated or pandered to or even directed to feel certain ways. It gave me a story of people, of governments, of war, and left it for me to experience. I enjoyed my trip to space, and I think you would too.